actually going to hand over to Andy Mycock. Um, so Andy is a reader in politics at the University of Huddersfield. His key research and teaching interests focus on post-imperial identity politics in the UK, including devolution politics, British war histories and the war commemoration. He's also currently leading a Levensume Trust project on lowering the voting age in the UK, which is absolutely excellent work. Um, this morning, Andy is going to be discussing the socialising effect of higher education on young people from working class backgrounds or who self-identify as working class. He will focus on the extent to which studying at university impacts on their democratic or political socialisation and how this influences their self sense and group identities. So without further ado, Andy, over to you. Well, thanks, Steph. That's really kind. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is a whole new world to me. Um, I like to describe myself as a Betamax man in a VHS world, but I'm not sure in the modern uh, thing that actually works, particularly with the young people I work with. Um, it's a really interesting conference, and I've, I've got to be honest that it, it's come at a right time. I uh, I grew up in a very uh, mixed family, working class uh, parents, um, but my mother married someone who was a lawyer, and I kind of grew up in a very strange world. I worked for, in a factory for 10 years before I went to university in the mid-20s, and uh, that sense of identity crisis has always been there. Um, I'm not quite sure that I'd ever describe myself as working class, but much of my own upbringing was in a working class environment. and as you get older in life, sometimes that can be difficult to navigate. And so in many ways, I'm alive to some of the issues that my working class students face. And this work is, is kind of grounded in two, back, in two things, really. One is, 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 is a wonderful article uh, by Robert Granfield from 1991, where he talks about working class students making it or faking it at university. And my own experience at university felt very much like I was both making it and faking it at the time. The other is about more contemporary work I'm looking at, which is about um, the culture wars and campus wars. The idea that um, higher education is becoming politicised in terms of the way in which we're polarising politics after Brexit and the binary sense in which civil society is fracturing on uh, a number of key issues. And we're starting to see that more and more in universities. And I'm interested particularly in the way in which that affects working class um, students. And so that's my starting point. It kind of links to a Levy Hume project I've been doing, looking at lowering the voting age and the idea that transitions to adulthood begin much earlier for the current generation of young people. You know, they start transitioning, particularly young women, into, into adulthood at the age of 11 biologically. And those transitions can extend well into the late 20s and even early 30s. And so the idea that at 18 you suddenly magically become an adult, I think that argument has gone. And I'm particularly interested in terms of um, my students who often report that they don't feel like they're adults because they don't feel like they're connecting with what the society, what society structures as adulthood, but at the same time they don't feel like they're youths, they don't feel like they're connected to those that are in secondary or primary or even further education. And there's this sense in which they're in a period of transition, weighthood, that they are somehow still being socialised whilst they're at the university. And that raises a number of questions about, um, <laughs> so that shows my age as well about my VHS joke, it does. Um, don't read the comments at the side when you're trying to present, by the way, it's too tempting. Um, one of the things which is interesting is, is the idea that the university campus, I know James is going to talk about this, I'm really excited to be working with James and Sarah and, and Fraser and the young people from Reclaim and particularly Steph and People's Powerhouse for putting this on. Um, the idea that university campuses themselves as a place, as something that you look into from outside and also as a space that you're in, have a socialising effect, the way in which particularly working class young people react to that space is distinct and different when compared to those students that come from uh, maybe more affluent, more privileged backgrounds, whose parents have been to university before. And I think that Sarah is going to be talking more about first generation challenges in learning. But there is something there about the way in which working class students are not socialised often in the same ways as their um, their middle class counterparts in terms of the preparation for university and that can be mainly in terms of the way in which they pick up opportunities, the way in which they engage with student life, but particularly because evidence suggests that many working class students don't typically residentially board at universities in the way in which maybe more other backgrounds do, so they become their commuter students and so that they have tensions in the way in which they link their life at university to 
their family life, which they often are still experiencing, in, and also in terms of their community links, that they don't get the same distancing effect that those that go away to study. And so they're challenged in the way in the fact that they're at university, that they're experiencing socialization, which may change the way in which they uh, feel about themselves, the way in which they self-identify, particularly the way in which they feel about the world politically, the way in which they engage but also in their peer groups of friends in their local community and the wider local community, that they're placed in a position where their values are often changing in some ways, or they're certainly in flow, they're being more malleable, but at the same time that they have these different elements outside of university life that actually situate them sometimes in a more complex or confrontational manner. I think the interesting thing about where we're at in terms of this idea of socialization is that there's a lot of research that already suggests that working class students don't get the same sense of belonging at universities that maybe some of their more privileged counterparts have, that they don't integrate into the campus environment at the same level, they don't find the campus welcoming in the same way, and they find that many of those sort of social engagements, joining societies and things like that, they don't take the same, they don't get involved in the same level. And so they don't have the same kind of socialising experiences of other people. And more than that, they're not inducted in the same way. And so when we see young students, young people arriving at university, they don't get any kind of help, in extra help in terms of their induction to make them aware of many of these opportunities. So they learn during their time. And sometimes, in my experience was, is that you actually miss those opportunities because you're not aware of them until possibly it's too late. More than that, that they don't have the same peer groups and they often find it very difficult to find other working class students with the same backgrounds and the same history so they can connect with them at university to, to normalise this feeling, the sense that they're part of a wider community. They have very few reference points in terms of working class, self-identifying working class lecturers. And often even the modules that are designed are often drawn from and present a particular perspective on social and political issues which are framed very much from a position which is not a working class position. So there are a lot of senses in which they're feeling that there is an outsider status rather than insider status on campus itself. And that many of those students themselves do not get involved in more of the diversity work that's on campus because they don't see class as one of those issues that typically is addressed in many of those exercises, particularly led by student unions. Why is that important? Well, I think that what you find there then is in terms of cultural identity and learner identity that working class students are faced with trying to fit in at a new environment within university but also still trying to fit in with those established environments, the family home within their local community, with their peer groups, with their friends at a time of enormous transition, enormous change in the way in which they feel about themselves. And so it, it presents a number of challenges in the way in which they think and quite often what happens is is that these working class students learn to code switch. And so they start to develop hybrid multiple identities, which they realize in different ways at different times in different spaces. And the kind of identities that they project at university are often cauterized and not brought back into their communities. They change the way in which it, and that's an experience that I feel very strongly. You know, I just, you know, discovered over the years that I was an inveterate code switcher and also you get in a sense of imposter syndrome the idea that you're not being authentic to yourself that your identity is somehow is constantly being changed because of external influences and you start to develop complex strategies that mean that you manage these situations in certain ways one of the things that quite often happens is, is that working class young students start to cauterize their friend networks at home and they start to isolate and exclude some of those at former friends because they don't map into the way in which they perceive themselves as they're changing. But more than that, that there's this sense in which they developed hybrid identities and um, Diane Ray, et cetera, have done some really good work on this, that there is a sense of hybrid identities that aren't equal, that one identity becomes more dominant than the other. And particularly if there's a sense in which a university identity is, is associated with things such as social mobility and different sort of more progressive sense of themselves, but they start to see that identity as a dominant identity compared to some of the more established identities. But this leads to this persistent sense of an emotional struggle around well, what is authenticity. And it's going to be really interesting to listen to Fraser this morning because he's just gone through an experience like this. And what I'm doing at the moment is doing some focus groups with students about how they're experiencing this and particularly in terms of their political socialization and the reason why i'm interested in this is is, is largely around this conversation that's taking place at the moment about 
has higher education expanded too much? Are there too many? And it's never fully said, but there is a sense in which some politicians think, are there meant too many working class students at university? And are they becoming too politically liberal? Are they becoming too woke? The snowflakes, we all know the narratives. Is university in some ways having a socialising effect which is indoctrinal, which is encouraging young people to, young working class people to mirror and to pick up the behaviours of those lecturers and the environment on campus and also the universities themselves as institution which are seen to be more liberal in many senses, are they becoming indoctrinated by that general environment? And there is a lot of talk about this, particularly uh, in the right wing press, but there's actually very little evidence that this actually is something which happens. And so what I'm doing at the moment is starting a, a project which looks at, does university turn young people liberal? Does it turn them to the left? Does it turn them into you know, the kind of more pejorative terms that we're, we're more experienced for? What is the role of the lecturers? What are the role of the student unions? Well, one of the things we do know is, is that working class students tend not to join these formal groups in the same ways that maybe other students do. And so in some senses, they don't get involved in student politics in, in, in the more traditional sense at the same levels. That's not true in some senses. And some working class young people do get involved very deeply in this. But they're, pre but they're presented with a challenge, which is about how do they map what they're doing at university with what they're doing outside their university? How does it affect their links to their family and their friends? And often it produces a series of choices that they either fight and they stand up and they project a very... Uh, dominant sense of their own identity, their working class identity, they flee, that they back off and they become commuter students that simply go to campus, go to lectures, go back home into their community. They don't integrate at all. Or thirdly, they assimilate, that they become, they, they change the way in which they see the world and they become part of uh, the dominant culture or what they perceive to be the dominant culture. I think it's interesting in some ways because student unions themselves are increasingly depoliticized and particularly on post 92 campuses where there's not the tradition of autonomy and independence and so in some senses the the the, the emerging issues around the campus wars at the moment the idea about you know what, what what kind of identity politics should be embraced by students well i'm not quite sure that that's an even effect across all universities and i think one of the interesting things is that different universities in different places in different spaces have different effects in terms of their political engagement to put it bluntly, there's not many people on the University of Huddersfield's campus talking about cancel culture at the moment. It doesn't resonate with many of the students in the same way, or it doesn't appear to. What I've been doing in terms of uh, my work on this is to test to what extent do different groups of students relate to this effect of the potential political socialisation. Steph, how long have I got, by the way? How long do you need? About another three minutes and I'm done. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, I usually have a talk. And what I'm looking at, I've, I've deliberately been looking for different control groups of young people to think about how they react to the socialising effect. And the first case study group that I did some focus group work with was a group of young working class men who associate themselves as right leaning, as conservative supporting students. And the things that came out there were very interesting in terms of the way they perceive themselves and the way they perceive the university. They often frame their own self-identity and collective political identity in terms of victimhood and grievance, that they were somehow being manipulated and overwhelmed by what they saw as an extremely intrusive and deliberately indoctrinal student union, and particularly the student union campaigns on things like LBTQI plus rights, and some of the issues linked to the Black Lives Matter campaign were seen very much in terms of the idea that there was a dominant middle class liberal student union culture which was imposing a political identity on these young people. And so they often reacted very strongly against that. And in many ways, the most interesting thing is that they argued that student union politics was unrepresentative of working class culture, that many of those young people felt that their community identities and particularly their reference points in their communities were normal and that somehow what was happening on university campuses was in many ways abnormal, that it wasn't representative of their full society. They were politically active, but it was noteworthy that they were politically active not on campus, but in the community. So they chose to engage with where they thought politics was authentic and that was a community-based activism. The second group was, was, was fascinating and it's a group of working class young women that I, um, I, I engage with particularly just after the 2019 general election. And I held a workshop, a focus group, the day after the election. And it was visceral. 
and I had young women articulating a sense in which they had grievances both against their parents and their friendship peer groups outside of the university. Their parents particularly because they saw their parents as dem in degrading them as saying that well they voted Labour because they were doing it for self-interest because of student loan, the, the, the potential removal of tuition fees and that in some ways they were naive. We are one student reported that her father had called her stupid. They then found that when they tried to engage politically with their community, with their peer group friends, that they then reacted against them in a different way. And they often argued that those at university were somehow privileged. And when these young women started to argue, well, we're paying 27,000 pounds, we're taking an enormous amount of debt, this is not the privilege that it used to be. They related it to their own experience and says, well, I'm working for minimum wage, I'm working in Wilkins, Wilco's or whatever, you are, very different and so they find themselves isolated politically outside of the campus and so that they tended to engage on the campus to a much greater extent because they found there that they had a sense in which their political values and the way they saw the world were reinforced by the on-campus environment and i think that's at the moment unfortunately where i've almost got to because unfortunately covid came along and limited some of the research we were going to do but we are going to carry on in the autumn when things are a little bit easier it's clear though that the space and place of the university and the culture and environment produces diverse political reactions across different groups of working class students. Some who see the university higher education environment very much as challenging and confronting their set of values and the way in which they see the world, and others seeing it very much as confirming and then seeing their own community and their own families to be the outsider groups in many ways. And I think the point of this, which I think is most interesting is, is that it highlights that in some ways, it isn't the traditional socializing effects of formal politics, student politics, which is changing people. It's what's happening in a much wider sense about what's happening on campus and on campus and making young people react in different ways, working class young people. And it still raises a question. And so what we're gonna do taking this work forward is to continue on and think about this question about does university change working class young people's political socialization and if it does how and in what ways and it's quite clear that what we know from the initial focus groups have done this is not a universal or uniform effect and the interesting thing going forward is going to be well to what extent can we start to detect that there are subgroups that do act in more collective and coherent ways steph thank you very much Thanks very much, Andy. That was absolutely brilliant. And I can see like the chats just exploded with loads of people agreeing and adding their own experiences. So thanks, guys. Thank you, for... everybody, by the way. Thank you for those. I will collect those. That's really kind. 